Welcome in Bobcat fans to our first edition of the Bobcat Recap. This is Logan Walsh. I'm delighted to jo be joined by Colin Kirkwood, um, one of our broadcasters who will be talking about this past week in Bobcat sports. Um, and we'll start off with last Thursday, the first game that anyone played was field hockey and a very close 2-1 to one loss against Seton Hill. In Seton Hill, Macy Layfield scoring the goal for the Bobcats, but a tough loss outplaying um, the Griffins from Seton Hill. Um, certainly one that they'll look to build on for the future. And then later that day, uh, football ended up playing their first game at Kentucky Wesley. And Colin, you were there with them. What did you make of that performance overall? Well, you could tell they were excited to be out there. And Coach Fitzgerald had said it's going to be a great time to get out there and really play against somebody who's in a different uniform. And there were a couple things that he had highlighted that he wanted to see a lot of progress with. And he talked about in our preseason interview about how the offensive line had had a bit of a shaky camp. And when we talked to him earlier today, he had said the fact that they came out, they played solid, they did a really good job, they did a lot of coverage and a lot of protection, which was, I mean, obviously key, and you want that. It was a close game, so that's the kind of thing where you can look back on a tape and say, maybe something like that, maybe two plays where they held up and brought the time and they got that 20-13 to 13 win. Those are the kind of things that are important. You might not see it on a highlight reel, but it comes into effect. And certainly one where you, you look at the score, and obviously the 20-13 to 13 is a little bit misleading, where... You know, Frostburg certainly looked like the better team um, for a good majority of it. But, you know, the mistakes on offense, you know, some of the turnovers, both teams turning the ball over. But the defense, you know, which we know is a special unit, they continue to stay special on that side of the ball. It's going to be important, especially if you're going to play in games like that throughout the season. There is a lot of good teams in this conference, and you're going to start conference play in week two. West Virginia State's going to be a tough play. It came off a tough loss against Shippensburg last week, went up there. Came out to a 10 nothing start on the Raiders of Shippensburg, and then they ended up losing that one. But still, it's going to be a tough one, and you're going to need to stay tough on the side of the defensive ball, get some more takeaways. And he also said Coach Fitzgerald wanted to really cut down on those turnovers, and that's going to be something I'm sure they'll work on a practice this week. Yeah, and so we, you know, are talking about some of that. And then obviously, MEC Defensive Player of the Week, Luke Freeman, um, was kind of the standout on defense. What other players sort of stood out to you in that? I really like the effort of the defensive line. They got a lot of push through, and, I mean, you saw they were causing a lot of havoc for both quarterbacks. They had switched quarterbacks, Kentucky Wesleyan did, about halfway through that game, and just everybody on that defensive line deserves a little bit of credit for how great of a performance they had. Absolutely, and so that being football, and then we go into Friday, um, and a lot of games on tap. Um, we started out women's volleyball played in a tournament, were unable to um, win any sets. They came close a couple of times. Um, but certainly a, a, a young team um, that's building for the future. Um, Haley Delore, who I know you and Jacob have talked a little bit about, our setter coming in from Marshall, um, getting onto the all-tournament team with 80 assists there. Um, and, and certainly one, have, have you guys talked to Coach Kylie Hine at all about you know, some players that you may look out for this year? Oh, I know obviously she's going to be on the list. She's going to be somebody that we're going to look to see in that first home matchup later on down the road here. But there's going to be a lot of chances for the rest of that team to really get together and learn what their play style is like, really come together, and that's going to be the main factor. I mean, you're going to have a long season in front of you here. A lot of these girls probably are going to be the first time they get together on a court. So you have all these preseason tournaments and all these other things along the line. It's going to be important to really get that cohesion together. That's what I always look for. Absolutely. And so, you know, joining them cross-country also having their first meet. Um, Liz Stanley on the women's side finishing top for Frostburg State. Um, they finished in fifth place, the men finishing in seventh there with Justice Lee Provost um, turning out um, in top for the men's side where, you know, I talked with head coach Shane Brookshire um, and, you know, we discussed that it's going to be more of a team effort than an individual effort this year. And so um, continuing on with Friday, women's soccer also playing their first game. I was there. We kind of talked about that. Um, a 2 0 win over Shippensburg. Um, and you'll see later the interview that I did with Tony Fiaco Miser. Um, and, and you've certainly seen a little bit of the women's soccer team as well. Um, so, in that game against Shippensburg, Lexi Pate scoring a really nice goal. And then Tony Fiaco Miser, who I just mentioned, um, scoring another important goal for that team. Saturday, volleyball was back. And again, the two set, two games that they lost and weren't able to win a set. But again, it was very close. Um, once again, Haley Delore. Um, standing out. Beverly Braun's going to be a very good player this year. And then we move into Sunday and we finally get to talk about men's soccer where you were at the game. And I know you're excited about that. <laughs> Absolutely. And a big 4-0 win over Concord. Um, you guys were at the game. I was with women's soccer still on Sunday. Um, but what, it, what stood out for you from that men's soccer game? Great effort from the men's soccer team. I mean, coming out and posting a 4-0 win in your first 
contest of the season at home. There were a lot of great fans who stuck out through the rain, and they enjoyed that one, and they got a treat nonetheless against Concord. Precision passing was definitely one of the keys I saw in that. They were very crisp with that back and forth, a lot of great efforts in that, and it really showed they had a lot of opportunities to score, and they made good. Yeah, and head coach Keith Burns being named our Coach of the Week um, for the Bobcat Sports Awards, um, and, a, and a great performance by his guys. He was delighted by their performance, and certainly one to look forward for the future where they play Wednesday. Um, on the road and then back home on Saturday against West Liberty and wrapping up the week women's soccer on Sunday a very very closely contested contest with Kutztown the women's team go up one nothing again by way of Tony Fiaco Miser with a header off a corner um, and then later on in the game a, a contentious penalty um, the referee judging Abby Dennis to have brought down a player in the box um, Kutztown gets a penalty evens up the game and very evenly matched throughout the game Ten seconds to go on the clock, and Kutztown gets a free kick just inside the corner flag. They put it into the box, bounces around, and they shoot the ball. It gets into the goal with zero seconds on the clock. Um, so one that certainly um, could could have gone either way and, and a disappointing loss, but one, again, where that team should be good um, for the future. Um, and that pretty much wraps up our week, and we'll look ahead um, a little bit to this week. And, you know, starting out with you guys, you had mentioned a little bit, um, you'll be going to that football game at West Virginia State. That'll be... Um, a pretty interesting matchup considering, you know, how both teams played last week. Um, and I know you talked to head coach Fitzgerald today. Um, what is his sort of expectations for that? He said they're going to come out hungry as every week that they should. And that's what teams do. But, of course, West Virginia State coming off. I mean, they had a 10 nothing lead against the Shippensburg team. That's a very strong caliber team in the PSAC East side of things. And for them to really come out on fire and have that kind of lead to begin things and ultimately to lose that one, I'm sure they're going to keep that in the back of their mind. That's going to be a lot of motivation, and going towards that, you're going to have a Frostburg team 1-0. Of course, West Virginia State's going to look to even the record here, get themselves back to 1-1, one one, maybe move up in those rankings a little bit. Just after everything I've seen throughout the entire week in the conference, it could be anyone's ball game right now. The conference is wide open. A lot of teams we haven't even seen yet. There were a few. There was a cancellation. A couple of other things moved around, but it's a wide open thing. It's going to be an exciting one, and of course, that one's going to be played on the campus of Charleston. It will not be at the West Virginia State home field as they are in the midst of renovations. Yeah, and Charleston, one of those teams that actually didn't play a week one game. They just didn't have one scheduled at all. And then Pembroke, the one that ended up being canceled. But every other team, um, it was us at Notre Dame, were the only two MEC teams that ended up winning. So we'll see where the conference goes, but one that we're looking forward to. Um, so on Wednesday, um, tomorrow, in fact, that we'll have field hockey and men's soccer both in action. Again, we talked about both those teams. Um, and then men's soccer playing Seton Hill, another team that you're very familiar with <laughs> coming from California, PA. Um, you know, I, I mean, how much do you remember about those couple of teams and, and how you look that, that we can do against them? Seton Hill is definitely going to be the one that you want to watch out for. They have a lot of special programs on that side of the state over there towards the Greensburg area, Pennsylvania, and they give it their all. They're very chippy side, and it just seems like a real – blue collar mentality for their programs and whatnot that I've seen throughout the year. So that's going to be the one that I would really circle on the calendar to look out for. And so volleyball then will come back on Friday and they'll play in the tournament at your alma mater in Cal PA. Um, they'll play a, another four games over the course of Friday and Saturday. Um, so we'll be looking for them. They can pick up their first win, hopefully um, get some confidence under their feet um, and then cross country as well, going to Bethany and so continuing a big Saturday, um, obviously you guys will be on the road and may not get a chance to see every team. Certainly you would like to um, throughout the day and, and we'll be all writing stories and, and cutting some highlights here. Um, field hockey um, will go back on the road um, against Lindenwood or they go down to Missouri all weekend pretty much. Um, and then women's soccer um, on Sunday will play at home against Concord, one of the favorites in the conference. Men's soccer against West Liberty, um, a scoreline last year that really – you can't take a ton of credit into because of how injured and how many players were missing from our team. It was a fine deal loss, but you know, this team's starting out pretty well. Um, do you expect them to, to come back home and, and kind of get that home remedy back? I would like to think so. I mean, you open up a season and you have a lot of success and you just got to keep that in your mind, keep moving forward and just try to copy and paste and keep it rolling. And so wrapping up the weekend then will be tennis who play their first match on Saturday. Um, it'll be here at home against District of Columbia and a team that head coach Jeff Splinter is pretty excited about um, bringing back some key players um, as well as adding a very talented um, player on the women's side. So he'll look for that. Um, but that should do it for about this season preview and for this past week. Anything else that you'd like to add, Colin? 
UDC, District of Columbia, Firebirds, really great logo. Check it out sometime if you get a chance here. I've seen a lot of logos throughout my time and just traveling around, and it's one of the cooler ones I've seen, District of Columbia. All right, well, that'll do it for this week's Bobcat Recap. But Colin, I want to thank you again for joining me and giving your insights for some of our sports. Um, and we will be back next week on Monday for another Bobcat Recap.